Hi everyone, we're back again with urban livability in sustainable urban development, right? I'm going to be covering what urban livability is all about, the definitions as well as what are the factors okay, that you need to understand in your syllabus, right? These factors um, have a chance of coming out quite highly, okay? It is... It could be a 12 mark essay, it could be a 20 mark essay, it could be a bigger mark essay, I, I, no one knows, okay. Urban livability is something that you must understand. It is not the same as urban, no, it's not the same as uh, sustainable urban development. So make sure you first get that right. Alright, so what is urban livability? Right, the definition is very, very simple, okay. It is the relationship between people and their everyday environment a way and quality of life. So essentially, livability, what it does is to measure how your life is, okay? It's a, it's kind of like a indicator, not really indicator. It is more of a, the, a measure of how good or how bad your life is in the city that you're living. Because remember, we're looking at urban. Remember that our, our focus here is always on cities, not on countries. So take note that different factors can affect livability. We're going to run through this in the next part. Um, right after this slide actually and then also take note that there are indicators as well which can back these factors up so you need to know your indicators your indicators in urban livability essentially works like your examples when you quote examples you're basically going to quote that as the indicator has shown a certain set of results which is why this is a factor that has affected livability all right whatever i just said if you need to play back the video go and listen to it again go ahead it is very important in understanding what livability and how you answer the question for livability is all about. Alright, the indicators I'll go through in the next part of uh, another video. Okay, it'll be a video after this. I'll leave a link somewhere up there in the top right corner of the screen as well as down below. Go check it out. You need to know the indicators. They are basically your examples for this. Okay, the first factor we're going to look at is urban climate. Urban climate is a very simple factor, I would say. Essentially, urban climate, you're looking at how the climate is like in the city, as simply put as that. Right? So as the town develops, it obviously will exert an influence on the atmosphere. The reason why okay, is because things like your vehicles, things like factories, they produce a lot of waste. And when things produce a lot of waste, they trap a lot of um, hot air. Okay, so when they trap a lot of hot air, this can actually increase the temperature. And in fact, in many cities, you would realize, if you go and look at statistics, the average temperature has increased 1 degree Celsius due to this high amounts of waste that is being produced. Right? So things like electricity, things like your whatever heaters, your air condition they're using, they all contribute to increasing the overall temperature in the city. Right? So one one unfortunate thing that has happened is there has been an increase in deaths due to higher temperatures. This can somewhat be related, okay, especially in cities whereby it gets very extreme. Um, although deaths-wise, it may not be that extreme as compared to other things like your noise or your air pollution, which we'll, exp uh, we'll explore after this. So like I've just mentioned, environmental quality is another factor that can affect livability, right? If you're going to be stuck in a place where there's constant haze, there's constant uh, bad air pollution as well as noise pollution, you're not going to like it. It's going to affect your livability for sure. So air pollution can be a huge issue. It can definitely affect your lungs. It can affect your health. In fact, in California, what has actually happened is that 97% of its cities right, have actually reduced in visibility, so you can't really see as well. And over 70% of the population in, in their city has eye irritation issues, which is actually quite severe if you think about it. You think about having to rub your eyes every day. It's going to be very, very um, impactful on your life. So this can be a factor that affects livability. One more thing would be noise pollution. Noise pollution, all of us hate noise. We want to be in places where it's quiet. So noise pollution, instead of a very basic generic um, um, level of just saying that, oh, it does affect my hearing and I get irritated, go, go a bit deeper to say how it can also lead to psychological problems. This is definitely an issue, as well as hypertension. So when there's a lot of noise, there could be a lot of stress that is built up, as well as hearing impairments that can lead... Um, can, can be a, a result of this um, after a long period of time. So the third factor we have here is urban legibility, referring namely to your infrastructure. Urban legibility all right, is actually a very, very important factor. This is a factor that is a livability factor that will tie in very closely to your social groups, especially your elderly and your disabled. So essentially what urban legibility, uh, legibility means is basically the organization of a city that allows it to be convenient for every social group to use, right? Because if your city doesn't have things like ramps, if it doesn't have um, lifts, right, it's not going to be very convenient for people who are disabled or elderly to use. So essentially urban legibility is to enhance the convenience for these people that would hence improve their livability as well. 
So the placement of landmarks can also be very important, right? In, if you want to get around the city, you're going to hate getting around a city which has got no road directions at all, no road signs. You're going to be like, where should I be turning? Where should I be walking towards, right? As compared to a city like, for example, Singapore, right, whereby there are signs all over the, the, the city. If you want to get from one place to another, oh, you just need to follow the sign and then the sign leads you to another sign, leads you to another sign. It's very easy for you to move around. Hence, you notice that it makes your life very convenient and that is what enhances your livability as well. So the next thing is your safety and stability. Okay, so over here, I've actually uh, written it wrongly. Just ignore this whole part. Let me just cancel this. Okay, essentially what the safety and stability is, is basically how safe and how um, stable the economy of your city is, right? So is your, is your, if, is your city one that is war-torn, right? Is it a city that is constantly being under-attacked? Is it constantly being um, under threat by terrorists? If it is not, you know that your city is going to be much safer. You would definitely feel more comfortable because you're not afraid or worried on the day-to-day -day things that may happen. Okay, moreover, if your economy is stable as well, you're going to definitely feel very comfortable because why? You can um, feel confident that you're not going to lose your job, right? That you're going to have um, a, a bowl of rice to eat at enough every day. So safety and stability is a huge factor. It is a political factor that can also affect livability, especially when it comes to your evaluation. If you want to compare between less developed and developed countries, this could be a huge factor. Why? Because less developed countries, safety-wise, may not actually be as strong as the more developed. Um, cities out there. So next one we have got subjective factors. Subjective factors is really like the name suggests. It's very subjective. So it's something that um, you yourself may face, which I may not face, that makes your city more livable for you. For instance, you like the education system here. That is subjective. A lot of people may not like it. For example, your personal likes and dislikes. You like the fact that you can take a bus to somewhere every day. That makes it more livable for you as well. So this is really subjective. It is up to you to quote. But generally, it is feelings of sentiment right, or connection to your family, friends and culture which can be the more subjective factor for many of people. So the last one I have here is socioeconomic factors. So this refers to your age, income, employment, and interest. So it's somewhat related to stability, okay, but the factor focuses more on safety um, and security. Okay, this one we're looking at a case of um, a e income inequality which exists in the city. So it's a really a socioeconomic um, factor that can affect livability. Why? If there's a huge income inequality, let's say the the rich and poor divide is very, very huge, right? It's definitely not going to be as level because you... The poor is going to constantly feel inferior. They're going to feel bad about themselves. They're going to land themselves in not as um, skilled jobs and that can lead to a lower income. So that can also affect their way of life, right? So in that sense, um, the employment which they actually are given as compared to the rich can be vastly different. So this can also affect their livability in that sense as well. Okay, so like I've, I've just stated over here. So that's actually all the factors you need to know. It's actually very, very simple, right? The factors is really, in in, in a lot of sense, some of you may even um, be able to just think of these factors by yourself, right? But just understand what the main factors are. Use them as a guide, okay? Use them as the way to craft your body paragraphs. If not, we'll move on to the exam requirements. So like I've just said, okay, factors can come out um, as any type of a question, okay? It can even be a three-mark question. It can be a very small mark question, or it can be the largest mark question in your paper, no one will ever know, right? Because there are factors, there's really a lot you can talk about. So you just need to understand the different factors with your relevant examples. These examples, like I've mentioned, okay, can either be your indicators or it can also be just um, examples that you can think of. For example, urban legibility. You can think of Singapore having a lot of ramps installed everywhere, especially in a lot of the elderly communities. Uh, communities. In fact, um, areas like, like, for instance... Um, Teck Wai or Jurong, right? Already have all these silver zones hey, for elderly to actually move around the area even with greater ease. Right? So if not, that's all I have for this video, okay? Actually, a very, very fast and simple video for you. Okay, go and understand what all these factors are. Make sure you really, really dive right in, okay? Go and explain more in depth if you can as well. And then after this, move on quickly to your next video, which will be the indicators for livability, which I'll be covering right after this. All right, that is the one that you need to know more of and not get confused with the indicators for sustainable urban development instead. All right, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Do smash that subscribe button down there as well. It really does help me out a lot. And leave your questions and comments down below. If you have any, I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. All right, so to the next indicators video, I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.